Hi, welcome to your 14-day weather forecast. At the time of recording, for it's just over one week to go until the big day. So, is the weather getting into the Christmas spirit or not? Well, I think the answer to the question will really depend on your point of view. But let's have a look. Here is the view across Europe and the North Atlantic at 18 GMT, Tuesday the 17th. Well, it's very mixed to begin with. There's a deep area of low pressure to the west, another one down here, a west or southwesterly flow pushing across all parts of the UK, although initially it is dry in central and eastern counties. As I run it, what we see is this feature brings heavy outbreaks of rain across southern and central counties, but colder air is moving down from the northwest. This is at the start of Thursday. White shading there in Scotland is indicating the possibility of wintry showers. I think mostly over high ground, but not exclusively. As I run this forwards, what we see is a ridge of high pressure builds in briefly, then further systems move in from the Atlantic. And by the weekend, something of a northwesterly tilt starts to develop. And look how closely packed together the isobars are. So it's going to be very windy. And with that northwesterly tilt, colder air will be returning southwards. Lots of white shading here, indicating, as I've said, sleet or snow showers. But I think really the model resolution is quite low and therefore it tends to overstate the extent of that risk of snow. But there will be wintry showers around, I would expect, in the northern half of the UK at this point. Going forwards, what we see is high pressure starts to have more influence. It's still changeable initially, but that high pressure is building strongly, and by the end of the week, it is dominating the picture across most of the UK. It's just the west of Scotland and the far north where it's staying more unsettled. So a lot's taking place. Here's the jet stream and upper air temperature sequence. UK just there under orange shading to start off with, which indicates mild air. The jet stream to the north and what we see as I run this is the jet stream does dip southwards for a little time, so we end up on its colder side. But it's rather a mixed picture throughout the week, really, until the end when it starts to head northwards as that high pressure builds and some very, very mild air is pushing up across the UK. So, what does all that mean for the conditions which we can expect down at the ground level? A few charts to illustrate, and these are from the UKV model showing the precipitation on Wednesday. These are the heavy outbreaks of rain moving across southern and central regions. The north is under cold ray. You can see a little bit of pink shading, which on these indicates sleet or snow. And the temperature profile on the right shows that split with the relatively cold conditions in the north, the mild ones in southern and central regions. By Thursday, the cold air has moved down across all regions. Showers mostly in the north, in Scotland there. They are falling asleep sleet or snow. A few showers in the west of Britain too, and Northern Ireland. Single figures, maximum temperatures everywhere at this point. Forwards to Friday, and it's more changeable once again. We've got outbreaks of rain returning southeastwards, and temperatures are beginning to edge back upwards, so it's turning milder. By Saturday, it's quite a mixed picture still. We've got outbreaks of rain and then that colder air feeding into the north through the day, bringing the risk of wintry showers once more. There could be some significant sleet or snow over the Scottish mountains. And you can see the temperatures on the right there, double figures in southern and central parts, single figures in the north. Forwards to Sunday, and this is using data now from the GFS model because the UKV doesn't reach this far. The pink shade in indicating sleet or snow, and as I've already said, I think the extent of the risk here is probably being overstated. Nonetheless, there could be some heavy wintry showers in western and northern counties, in the west mostly over higher ground. The temperatures on the right there are indicating that it will be distinctly chilly at this point, even in the south only 5 or 6 degrees, but I suspect when the time comes they will be a little higher than what is being shown here. Then by Tuesday, Christmas Eve, 
high pressure now exerting its influence and it's turning much milder once more. I think there's just a little bit of uncertainty about the temperature profile at this stage with high pressure building up from the south. It may be that the GFS model has been overstated and the maximums a little bit. We could start to see something of an inversion developing. I think though it is looking mild at this point. Strong winds at times too as I've already discussed on the left here of the UKV forecast through Saturday into Sunday on the right for GFS for Sunday afternoon and I think the key takeaway is that gales are most likely in western and northern coastal counties but even inland areas seeing strong winds at times. There will be some patchy frost too, the greatest risk perhaps Wednesday night into Thursday morning in the north, there may be Thursday night Friday morning in southern counties but with that change below and settled theme, widespread frost isn't likely through most nights during the first week. The temperature profile from Mogreps G here for London just really reinforces the message. It is fluctuating. In fact, all the runs, which are represented by the individual lines, are closely packed together, so good agreement really until we get towards the very end there when more of a spread occurs. But Initially, temperatures climb, it becomes mild or very mild, then they dip as that colder air heads southwards, and then they climb again, then they dip once more. So, fluctuating through the first week, the coldest conditions, though, in the north. Also, as I've said, it's going to be windy, and the chart here shows the wind gust forecasts from the Mogreps Ensemble for uh, Glasgow, which is probably where some of the strongest winds will occur in the west, the northwest of the UK. You can see there 50 miles an hour early on and then it they ease a little bit but through the period of the 21st to the 23rd 40 to 60 mile an hour gusts there depending on the individual run so it is it is something to keep an eye on through the first week particularly i would say in the north and the west rainfall the aggregates here are for days 0 to 5 from the ecm and gfs models Wettest in the west, especially the northwest, but rain in all areas. Significant amounts even in parts of the south, according to the GFS. I think a lot of that is falling with the first feature which moved across that part of the UK through a Wednesday, maybe into Thursday. But just how much rain it deposits is somewhat uncertain. You can see the ECM totals are a little bit lower in central and eastern England. Moving forward to the 0 to 10 day period. Totals have continued increasing, but not hugely so in most areas. Although you can see the orange shading in Western Scotland is pointing towards very wet conditions there. And I think really that is a message for much of a period. It's going to be wettest in the Northwest. So in more general terms, how do the deterministic models compare with each other towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS on Tuesday the 24th, Christmas Eve. High pressure is building northwards and we've got very mild air pushing up across the UK from the southwest. The Canadian model shows something similar, as does the German Icon, the European ECM and the artificial intelligence version of it too. Finally, the UK Met Office Global. It's a similar theme, perhaps more of an Atlantic influence across the northern half of the UK on this model at this point. But taking them all together, it looks fairly certain that high pressure will start to become increasingly dominant. With it building up from the south, the air mass is going to be a very mild one. Now, that doesn't always mean that it's going to be mild down at the ground level. An inversion can develop. That's where temperatures at the surface are much lower than they are aloft. But the conditions at this point at least don't look favourable to that type of thing happening. It could happen further down the line, but I think what we're looking at towards the end of the first week is a mild setup. The possibility of rain mostly in the north, the northwest. Does that continue to be the case as we head into and through the second week? Well, of course, at this range, it is just about the general direction of travel rather than the specifics. Let's start with the 16-day GEFS plot for London. 
Upper air temperatures, and the message here is very, very straightforward. Most runs have them well above the 30-year norm, which is shown by the thick black line. I think some of those could be approaching record-breaking values. Now, with that said, there are one or two runs which are bringing in much colder air quite early in the period. Because we're only one or two, they're in a very small minority, so that particular outcome is considered unlikely to say the least. But I think what they may be hinting at is high pressure building further north, maybe northwestwards towards Iceland and Greenland. In turn, that allows a northerly feed to move down across the UK and bring much colder air. It is something to keep an eye on, but with only one or two runs going for that option, at least early on, it's not something I would be putting much stock in. There is maybe a greater chance of that happening as we approach the new year. You can see a downwards trend there. The thick purple line the ensemble mean is dipping back towards the average because there are more runs in the ensemble bringing in colder air. In terms of the precipitation risk across the bottom, not many spikes through the first five days or so, so it's going to be mostly dry, and that's what you would expect with high pressure dominating. Towards the end, the number of spikes increases. Is it going to be snowing? Well, very probably not. The snow row never climbs above one. It can go up to 33. I've mentioned the possibility of an inversion and said I didn't think it was likely at the end of the first week. Does the chance of it grow as we go through the second week? Well, the data tables here are showing the two meter temperature forecasts, the maximums across the top, the minimums across the bottom, and the yellows are showing a very mild set of maximums of between 11 and 15 Celsius. But the amount of yellow through the first few days as we get beyond Christmas Day, Boxing Day, it is decreasing and more average conditions are returning. And that may well be indicating that something of the temperature inversion will be developing because we've just seen the temperatures aloft are still very high at this point. The overnight lows also starting to dip and the risk of ground frost at least increases through the middle and second half of the week. Up to Manchester, it's really a similar picture. Perhaps a few more rain spikes early on and towards the very end there, the snow road ticks up to seven, indicating a low chance, but not negligible chance of some snow falling. So there could be a suggestion, as I've been saying, of it turning colder towards the end of each second week. The two meter temperature ta data table show very similar trends to the London ones. Even this far north is lots of yellow to begin with, but the amount decreases and we see more typical values starting to come back. Likewise with the overnight lows, the chance of frost grows towards the end of the second week. Glasgow, this one is a little different. The positive anomaly to start off with maybe not as great as it was on the Manchester and London ones. And towards the end, it's the ensemble mean there is actually just dipping fractionally below the 30 year average. But maybe the biggest difference is in the number of precipitation spikes because there is an ongoing risk of rain through the second week. As I mentioned, the wettest conditions look like being in the northwest for much of the forecast period. The snow row values, well, it's just worth maybe pointing out that through the first weekend, they actually climbed very high. That was when we had that northwesterly tilt in place for a relatively short time. But the second week, which is what I'm focusing on here, has low maximums, going up to seven there at the very end. The two meter temperature data tables, in many ways they are following similar trends, albeit at lower levels from the Manchester and London ones. The amount of dark green increases through the second week, so more runs are bringing in colder conditions. There's quite a bit of yellow actually to start off with, but that drops away fairly quickly. The overnight lows, well, the risk of frost is increasing there towards the end. Rainfall through this second week, the charts are showing the percentage chance of five millimeters or more falling on each of the first three days. The red indicates a very high risk there in northwestern parts of Scotland, western parts of Scotland as well, up to about 62, 80 or even 90%. But look at the light shading in southern, central and eastern counties of England. A good signal for it to be mostly dry in those areas. And not much changes through the next three days. The ensemble spread will be increasing at this range. The further 
into the future you look, the greater the range of possible outcomes, but the general pattern is consistent with it being wettest in the northwest. The mean surface level pressure data table for York is quite interesting because you can see that strong build of high pressure. I can't really recall seeing so much orange in these columns, at least not for quite a long time. Those runs going for between 1,026 to 1,040 millibars, so really, really high pressure dominated. Towards the end of the second week, though, pressure is starting to fall. The amount of green there increases those runs which are bringing in areas of low pressure. So the trend is clearly upwards for the first few days and then downwards once we get beyond Christmas and start heading towards the new year. The snapshot mean surface level pressure chart for Friday the 27th from the GEFS indicates that high pressure will be very dominant at this point, maybe more of an Atlantic influence still there in the far north of the UK, but really it's this strong area of high pressure to the south which is controlling things and it's building across the UK. The ECM ensemble is consistent with that. Just to give an indication of how dominant high pressure is at this point, here are the anomalies for days 10 to 15, and the orange shading is indicating a positive pressure anomaly. It's not strictly a pressure anomaly, but we can think of it in those terms. And it's really a very big one as well, between 10 and 15 over the United Kingdom. It's not often you will see such a strong anomaly when looking this far ahead because it's calculated by averaging out all the individual model runs and at this range more often than not they are bringing in quite a variety of possible outcomes and tending to cancel one another out. So to summarise, week one changeable with temperatures fluctuating Wet and windy spells in all parts of the UK, and as it turns colder at times, there is a risk of wintry showers in the north, mostly but not exclusively over high ground. Some patchy nighttime frost as well. By the end of the first week, high pressure will be starting to build from the south, and that sets the theme for week two. Mostly dry in much of the UK, but still wet in western and northern Scotland. It's likely to be very mild early on, although there is that chance of a temperature inversion developing as I discussed, but I think really it is looking mild. But later in the week, temperatures start to dip, and by the end of the period, maybe turning colder generally or more unsettled. It really all depends on what happens to that area of high pressure. So, uh, there we have it. I started off by asking if the weather would be getting into the festive spirit or not, and I said that it would really depend upon your point of view. Well, when producing these forecast videos, I always try to keep my personal weather preferences out of them. But, as it's almost Christmas, I'm going to make an exception this week and I'll say that I find high pressure building up from the south during the winter months to be one of the most boring weather patterns imaginable in the United Kingdom. Well, regardless of that, I hope you found this video useful and enjoyed it. As ever, if you did, please consider hitting the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. In that way, you'll not miss any of my future updates. Remember as well to stay up to date with the day-to-day -day developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.